So, um, just as far as um, just a little bit of background, I won't do a whole lot of this sort of uh, advertising and things, but you know, uh, when you want to complain about your city government and how we're doing and all of these things, it is important to keep it in perspective and in context. And uh, I, I can't claim this because I've, I've, I haven't been here very long, but this, this city is actually has a very long and strong uh, tradition of sound and good professional financial management. And it's, va it's validated and verified by, lot, by recognitions from lots of different entities. The Government Finance Officers Association, that's a national professional group, um, has awarded the city distinguished budget presentation back to the mid-1990s. The California State Municipal Finance Officers Association, uh, excellence in operating budgets back to the mid-1990s, so a long string of time. GFOA again, excellence in financial reporting 15 straight years, so that's the annual comprehensive financial report of the city for the past 15 years. Unqualified audit opinions from the our outside auditors since 1994, AAA bond rating. Okay, up until uh, three years ago, we were one of only five cities in California with a AAA bond rating, the highest bond rating one can have, basically due to the financial health and the good financial management of the city. It's well, changed. Another one of them, Berkeley? No, actually, no. Berkeley is not. No, no. And. Um, well, yeah. Now it's changed a little bit because, believe it or not, about three years ago, Standard and Poor's changed some of their criteria on how to evaluate uh, municipal finance and the ratings. And they're actually, I think, up to 40 cities now that have some sort of AAA bond rating. But the point is, there are 478 cities in California, and again, our tradition has been we've been in the top five as far as the city having the strongest bond rating. Um, just uh, some real basics. Uh, the city's overall budget is, is actually quite large for a city our size because we run a full range of uh, public utilities, as you all know. Um, but our general fund is $142 million, or it used to be. It's gone down. And uh, all of our enterprise funds are $316 million. Yes, sir? Might I ask to have the screen raised so we can see the text? <coughs> yeah, um, that's as far as that's as far as it goes. Raise it up so we can see it. Come sit up. Why don't you? Yeah, if you could move, sit, sit it, sit it would be easier for you to move than it would be for me to hold it up while I was talking. Uh, really? Um, I think that there are others in the group who can't see the text. Right. Right. Well, we're we're making do with the with the equipment we have here. Thank you. So anyway, the the point I want to make is. The, we, we have a fiscal crisis, really, in California and in California cities. We know our state is in dismal shape um, with, with a tremendous amount of uncertainties. Um, and it's questionable uh, in a lot of ways, uh, really, ultimate, I think the jury's still out of, uh, over the fiscal solvency of our state, which is, of course, by far the largest state uh, in the union. And so this speaks volumes about both how we got ourselves into this situation but, and where we are. Um, but like cities across California, we've got our own problem, and ours is concentrated in the city's general fund. So basically, this presentation really focuses on how we're going to manage through and balance the city's general fund. So except for your utility bills, for the most part, this is where life in the city, I mean, kind of, that's where it's manifested through the general fund. Police, fire, planning public works, um, parks and recreation through our community services department. Uh, all of those functions are provided through the general fund through the general tax dollars that are collected by the city. Um, last year, we uh, had a $10 million budget or uh, beginning of the year, and the council balanced the budget with a three-part strategy, uh, one-third in service or program changes, one-third trying to get some new revenue and some other options, and one third year in employee compensation and pay. Yes, sir. Don't you mean a ten million dollar deficit? Ten million dollar. What did I say? Budget. Okay. Yes, a ten million dollar deficit. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, and um, and we balance that budget. And I'll come back to talk about that a little bit more later. 
But uh, by the time we got to mid-year this year, our fiscal year starts on July 1st. When we got to mid-year, uh, we after after closing a $10 million gap, we had another $6.2 million gap, mostly due to revenue uh, declines. And again, if you look across California and you're reading stories, you see this all over the place. San Francisco, mid-year, huge gap. Oakland, San Jose, wherever it is, the same thing. So this isn't a question about what are those people in the city of Palo Alto doing. This is a kind of systemic uh, uh, phenomenon that's sweeping the state, uh, mostly for two reasons, uh, very simple ones. Uh, re our revenue sources, uh, um, income going down, and expenses in some areas continuing to go up. So we've got a fundamental imbalance. We balance the budget with one-time adjustments here this year, and in one sense the details don't matter that much. Now, I um, apologize for this, but this is trying to show us over a four-year period, we're in this year right now, right here, this budget that we're dealing with uh, right now that we're proposing to the council over the next couple months is in 2011. But beginning back in fiscal year 2009, we already start off with an $8 million general fund budget gap. So you take that out of what, 140 some million dollars, what is that, Lalo? Six or seven percent budget gap. There we go. Um, we balance that with basically one-time uh, adjustments just due to the immediacy of it. When we got to 2010, as I mentioned, our council went ahead and said, you know what, we've got an ongoing long-term structural imbalance. We can't kid ourselves and act and think like, oh, we can just sort of move things around or try to balance things in one year and then everything will be better. I think understandably they recognize we're in a sort of a fundamental change in the economy and the impact it has on local governments. We have to make ongoing changes. So they balanced our budget with $7 million worth of, of ongoing structural adjustments. Um, some of the largest were in the pay and and benefits area for city employees, and you might recall some of the media attention, everything over the past in the past year, difficult negotiations that we had, um, some uh, one-day uh, strikes of of a sort uh, by some of our employees, um, because the city was working to try to um, one get greater uh, employee contribution across the board towards rising benefit costs and two, to restructure the long-term benefit costs for the city. And when we show you the trend line on those benefits, you'll, you'll uh, completely understand why that was a necessary thing for the city to begin to do. It was contentious inside the organization. It's important to remember that in the state of California, um, uh, collective bargaining laws, uh, I mean, we have, we have wide and deep collective bargaining laws and, and the role of labor in, the, uh, uh, in, in this state uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the labor management uh, relationship is such um, that there is really uh, a lot of negotiation that is required in making changes as a, as a manager in our state. And it's not just something that one can easily do. Um, and so it involves working through uh, our labor groups to try to, to work out changes and agreements. And, um, and it was very difficult for us. Um, but uh, we did. Uh, then this year, as, we, as I mentioned, we had this additional uh, adjustment, which we are doing with one time, acknowledging that we have a new council who's coming in in January, it would be very difficult for them to come in and say, oh, let's make $6.2 million worth of uh, reductions or whatever, just like this in an ongoing way. And so that meant we, would, we knew we were going to have an ongoing structural deficit for this next year. So it's $8.3 million for us. 